We are here for another things I didn't review video. Just have to say right off the top, I do apologize for this one being late. You guys are all alive. You guys all are living a life at this moment. So, you know, you understand that things just happen. Things get busy, hectic at times. And these first few months of the year have just been not necessarily busy, but I would say busier than I would like it to be. And I haven't really found a lot of time to record all these reactions, although admittedly there were definitely times that I could have and just got lazy at times and things like that all I think amount to why this is coming out uh, considerably later than it normally does. But with that said, um, it's coming out anyway, so I wasn't just going to put it off completely. And yeah, for those of you who don't know or maybe forgot if you've already seen one of these, this is just me recapping every film album, TV show, what have you, mostly movies and music related stuff that I did not do a proper full flesh out review for on my channel. That is mostly what I do on my channel for those of you who may not know that. And these are just my quick thoughts on each one of these, about you know, 30 seconds to a minute each. I'm not going to give any sort of grade or rating for them. Just how I feel and then I move on to the next. They're all pre-recorded as well, so I'll stitch them all together for you guys. And normally I do albums, EPs, mixtapes, movies, TV shows. I have them pretty much all in those five categories, but this time around it's actually only going to be albums, mixtapes, and movies. Uh, I didn't get to any TV shows or finish any TV shows for these first few months, any EPs at all. So just gonna be those three things, gonna be a little bit shorter than normal. And there are also stuff that I did watch or listen to that are not gonna be in this video. Just because I didn't wanna delay this long enough, there are a number of other things I could have filmed a reaction to. So I decided to just cut it down a little bit, trim it down, uh, just so I could get this out sooner. I didn't wanna keep you guys waiting anymore. I'm putting out the reactions in order from when these things came out, and you can also find time codes in the description box below you. Um, or below this video, I should say, not below you. Um, in case you want to skip around, it's going to be still a long-ish video, so of course, do whatever you want with that. I believe that is all. As I've said before, there's like a little list I go through when I'm doing one of these intros to this video. Hope you guys enjoy. One other thing I actually do need to do is pose for the thumbnail. I always forget to do that, so I'll probably do that in a second here, but for now, I'll just say, uh, here you go, enjoy. No, 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 no. Five Easy Hot Dogs is a surprising but pretty pleasant album actually from Mac DeMarco. It's all instrumental, no vocals on it, and I think it goes over pretty well. I like the concept of each song deriving from different cities he had been to on the road. Supposedly he conceived them in these areas of the titles that they were referring to. I don't love the excessive use of claves though, especially in the second half, but I think if you go into this expecting basically a Mac DeMarco project without him singing in it, that you might like it. A Reckoning sees Kimbra experiment a little bit outside of her normal indie pop, indie rock tendencies, the instrumentals on this theme, having influences ranging from R&B, soul, jazz, even hip hop. There are legitimate trap beats in this album, believe it or not. I do just find it to be pretty inconsistent, though I think it's actually very backloaded meaning that it uh, has some nice, really nice tracks to close the things out at the end. But uh, yeah, it, leading up to it, I wasn't really that into it, but it does end nice. I just don't think it's really enough to make this a good album, but mainly a so-so meh one. Pierce the Veil are back. It had been a while since we had a new release from them. The title of this album is The Jaws of Life. And I liked it actually. I had heard going into it, prior to actually putting it on, that there was a little more experimentation with different genres in this thing. Uh, grunge, alternative rock being some of them. And then some. There's actually even more different sounds that they explore here. And I think it pays off pretty well and I just like hearing them try this different stuff and still sounding good in the process. So for the sake of time, I'm just gonna combine both of Skrillex's two albums that he released consecutive days back to back, which kind of reminds me of what Brockhampton did uh, last year. Although for me, this was nowhere near the quality of those two albums, but not to really even compare. They're completely different sounds, genres entirely. 
I just didn't really get a whole lot out of these. I liked some of the singles, and I was actually kind of looking forward to what he was going to bring with these two projects, but I was pretty underwhelmed. Most of it's not a lot of variety or as much as I'd hoped there would be. Um, a couple of unique standout features, some that really don't work though. Uh, they're both, I think, pretty mediocre. Cracker Island was kind of a typical Gorillaz experience I have with one of their albums. All the genre bending that they put to the table here. There's some pretty out there collaborations with the likes of Stevie Nicks or Bad Bunny. That track in particular seems to really, really be popping off and one of the more popular ones for them. I liked it, thought it was pretty good. I didn't love it though, it's not my favorite Gorillaz album, but it's a decent one, I think, in their catalog. And I could probably see myself coming back to it at some point. Love Sick by Don Tolliver, a new album by him. I haven't really talked about him much. He's been featured on some albums I've reviewed, but this is kind of the first time I've ever talked about his solo music. I don't really have a lot to say about it, to be honest. He had a few songs that I thought were pretty cool. I like his voice, and I like when he does stick to a more R&B, soul-inspired style of music, I guess. Uh, when he's rapping, I, I don't... I don't love Racking Dawn as much, to be honest. Uh, I would say overall it was just kind of a mixed bag. Logic is back again, another album. I'm kind of surprised it's actually coming this soon, although I guess I shouldn't be. He's done this before where he's released consecutive projects like within a year's time span. I admire what this is, and I do like the narrative surrounding it and it being based sort of on his early stages of his, the early stages of his career, I should say. The skits really call back to that, but I do also think that the skits are a little too prominent here, and I do think that at times they do kind of mess up the flow of the album, even though I do think that there are a good amount of quality tracks on here, and I like a lot of the, what Logic is talking about here. I'm down with the production for the most part. I just didn't love the way it all came together. The execution, I thought was a little hit or miss at times, but overall, not bad. It was a solid album. 10,000 Gex is pretty much living up to almost all the potential that I had seen with one with 100 Gex up to this point. With uh, the EP they came out with at the end of last year, Snake Eyes, which I thought was pretty solid. And um, on 1,000 Gex, their last studio album, which I honestly thought was just decent. I definitely thought it was a little bit inconsistent. This for me though is much more consistent. This is basically an improvement I think on all fronts, on the production, the songwriting as well, been a little more compelling to me. I think Dylan and Laura's performances on here are a little bit tighter, a little more on points. Pretty much like 1000 Gex, but even better in almost every way. Very, very happy with how this turned out. On top of the covers is a new album by T-Pain. It is as the title suggests, all cover songs, nothing really original here. I mean, I don't want to say that, but just they're they're not original songs. They're songs by other artists previously. And it's whatever. I, for the most part, don't really care for it that much. I will say that there's a surprisingly pretty decent cover of War Pigs on here. And I'll give props to T-Pan. I think his vocals actually fit that track pretty well, surprisingly. Yeah, besides that though, uh, it's like, whatever. I. Don't really care. Scaring the Hose, volume one. Maybe it's gonna be another one, hopefully. Uh, awesome, I really enjoyed this. I was looking forward to it a lot. Uh, you guys know how I feel about both of these guys. I've talked about their music, given them plenty of praise. I was just, yeah, super anticipated for it and I would say it really did live up to my expectations. I, I've enjoyed it even more, I've given it repeated listens and it's only gotten better for me you know i did have that issue that a lot of people did initially with some of the mixing and the production but it's kind of doesn't really phase me anymore now it's wild it's loud it's crazy it's scary and it's awesome love it fallout boy have a new album it's called so much for stardust i didn't like it i don't know i really don't know what else to say but i just didn't like it i have not really been a fan at all of Hollow Boy's newer stuff, and really I'm thinking back to like the pre previous 10 years or so. Around the time they made their big comeback, it had been a few years since they had an album. 
and they came back with you know hits like Centuries and Immortals. Although yeah, it was around that time. Since then, have not been into their stuff. They're more pop electronic style that they've embraced. And this is pretty much just more of the same for me. There are a couple of unique things they tried here with notably an Ethan Hawke skit interlude theme and some of the song writing here, but I'm not into it. I just don't, I'm not into it. I don't know. What do you want me to say? I'm not, I don't like it. Did you know that there is a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? This is a new album by Lana Del Rey. It's 77 minutes long. And that makes people ask the question, is it too long? The answer for me is yes. I do think it is a little too long. I do think there are some tracks that did not need to be on here. It does feel a little bloated to me. Although I can understand, I've heard a lot of people are liking this right now. There are some great songs on here. In particular, I really love the cut with the bleachers. Big fan of that one. I just think it is sort of, sort of lacking in variety for me. I do think it is decent overall. It's not bad. I just think it will, if it ever does really grow on me, it'll take a while. And partly because of how long it is, I'm not going to be and see to just listen to this casually at some point soon. Since I Have a Lover by Slack is one of the most boring releases of this year for me, and I think it probably will be by the time the year is over as well. I really have nothing much else to say other than that. I think he has a cool voice. I do think it's kind of overdone at times, but I don't mind it in certain tracks, certain moments here. I just really was bored by this. Yeah, let's move on. I really like that, a new DJ Drama album. You know, basically these kinds of things are just compilation albums with certain artists popping up here and there. I would say some of the highlights for me were like, as far as the people that are on this album, I like Tyler the Creator on the intro. I think that's a pretty cool way to start it. Uh, surprisingly, I think Jack Harlow had one of the better tracks on here. I don't know, there were at least a couple others that I thought were okay. But, eh, I mean, it's it's whatever. It's just one of those albums where there's a few good songs, but most of them don't really ever want to revisit. DJ Drama does his thing, pops in here and there and yells and yeah, it's, it's a DJ Drama album. So here you go. No More Half Measures, I thought this was an EP, but it's actually technically a mixtape according to Brad himself. This is made by Brad Tasting Music, for those of you who don't know, the YouTuber, I like him a lot, subscribe to him. And, you know, this was just funny to me. I just, and I enjoyed it, it was nice and short. I think my favorite track is the one that's very Pop Smoke influenced Brooklyn Drill style. I thought that was really funny. I mean, it's, of course, it's not amazing, but I think it serves its purpose in a nice sort of comedic rap project, I think. Back on Dexter, a recent uh, installment in this series of mixtapes from Gangsta Grills, or as he says in these projects, Gangsta Grillsy! Yeah, uh, this one is Cash Doll, uh, the lead artist behind this thing. And I'm, I'm not into it. I'm just really not into this thing, if I'm being honest here. And I do feel like it also is very contradictory, in my personal opinion, because it talks about female empowerment, having these female rappers be more involved with these kinds of projects and just in the rap world in general, which I'm all for. I'm not against that at all. I think that's cool. But I do feel like just with how little Cash Doll has to show for on this thing and DJ Drama as well, who's narrating it, I do feel like it is just kind of contradicting itself in a way. I'm, I'm personally just not impressed by a lot of what happens here. So ignoring the fact that a bunch of my hair is gone and I look five years younger than I actually am, Megan, 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 as three times I've said it now, so I, I won't say it again, just to ruin the whole thing there. Big phenomenon with this movie, big, praise it's gotten, lots of praise it's gotten for its blend of comedy and horror, and it basically being a satire, I got quite a bit of enjoyment out of it, of its blending of genres, how it doesn't take itself too seriously. Some of the side characters, I think, 
are some of the best parts of this movie. It's walking a thin line between being a complete dumpster fire and being a masterpiece. And while I, I do think it leans a little more towards a masterpiece, but it's not quite there. There are issues with this movie, but I do still think overall it's a pretty good time, interesting, unique experience. Missing made for a pretty gripping thriller, actually. It's presented in the same style as a movie like Searching with all these different screen captures, screen recordings, Thorne Reeves characters on her computer a lot of the time. I actually think she is very good in this movie. The story had some unexpected and unpredictable twists that I thought were nice. Now with this kind of movie, it does rely a lot on exposition. Sometimes that can be to its detriment, but you know, considering that I really didn't think I was going to care for this movie, I walked out satisfied and especially with regards to it being a January movie. Now I will say that I think the theater I saw this in and specifically the audience helped me a little bit with this movie because there were a lot of people, there were a lot of laughs throughout the movie and even clapping at the end. And so I think I would have definitely disliked it more if I had seen this by myself or in a smaller crowd. But with that said, I still didn't really like it that much. I do think that the four main actresses are good and they work well together. You can tell that there's a past and backstory with these characters as it is explored in the film. But what did it for me was just the humor. I had very few laughs or found very few jokes funny in this movie. Honestly, there's even a lack of realism too. I mean, at times that I couldn't tell if I was watching a comedy or a fantasy. I'm exaggerating, of course, but I think you get what I mean. I'm really glad that I finally saw this movie. I say finally because before I had seen it, I had a, a message from Fandango to where I get most of my tickets for movies to uh, see this movie for free at a showing, but I couldn't make it because I think I was working that night or something. So I'm glad I finally got to go see it. I've heard good things about it. And I really liked it. For those of you who don't know, this is, I believe, an Australian film set in Australia. Australian actors, obviously. And a bunch of people that I don't know that wasn't familiar with the director. But um, I'm really looking forward to watching more stuff with all these people because I think that all the actors do a great job. Really liked how the direction was helmed here. I liked the story. Thought it was well done, it was touching, funny, sad. Um, overall, it's a really great experience. I thought the concept for this movie when I first heard about it was kind of funny, kind of silly. And I just kind of shrugged it off thinking whatever, I'll, I'll maybe we'll go see it. And I kept hearing just more stuff about it. I saw more promotion for it. And I ended up getting really excited for it and I saw it. And yeah, I would say it pretty much was just as good as I would hoped it would have been. And as much of an homage to the B-movie genre as I hoped it would have been as well, I just thought this movie was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the sort of simplistic nature of it, which is funny because it's about a bear that does cocaine, so obviously it's not simple, but there is something kind of grounded to it as well that I think is pretty cool. I liked the characters, the performances, obviously the acting isn't amazing, but it's the kind of movie that just has everything kind of in the right place. The acting isn't too good. It's not like too funny or too serious at times. It's a pretty fun time, I would say. Scream VI? I'm just kidding. Scream 6 uh, following Scream 5 last year, even though it was just called Scream. I would say this is pretty much on par with that one in terms of the quality of it, but I really don't know why, I just, I liked it kind of a good amount more, actually. I do think that this is an improvement. I think this is one of the better movies in the whole franchise as well. I was really pleased with this one. I like the setting a lot, it being taking place mostly in New York. I think that's a good idea to have it be set in the midst of the chaos of a big city like that. I think once again, the meta humor is pretty on point here. I'm liking a lot of the cast. I just like where this is going. I don't know if there are plans to be more in the franchise, but I do think they set it up pretty well for more films to come. And, you know, I think that's cool. I know some people get annoyed when movies set up other movies, but I think if it's well done, it can be satisfying. And I would say here, that's the case. 65, I definitely think people are being a little hard on this movie. I can understand not enjoying it. And I wouldn't say that I necessarily liked it all that much, but I think this is perfectly fine. I think for what it is, 
it being mainly just these two characters in the film going on this simple mission, trying to get from one place to another. There's dinosaurs involved, special effects, CGI, what have you. It's perfectly watchable. It's definitely not outstanding. It's definitely flawed, could have been better, but you know, there were some actually thrilling moments, I think. I thought the special effects for the most part pretty well handled. I didn't mind it. It's it's okay, I think. Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I really enjoy the first Shazam movie. I remember seeing it, being really happy with it. I rewatched it as well soon before I went to go see this and I still really like it. And I was excited for this one. And it's, uh, it's not as good. It's not nearly as good, I think. I don't know. I do think that it really lacks the heart that that first movie had. The family aspect here is much more underutilized than it is in the first one and that was definitely a disappointment to me. I'm still liking the cast. I think they all work really well together. I'm liking some of the new additions as well. I I don't know, there's just, there are things here that do, that feels like there's some things here that are missing, like more of the family stuff. The villains I think are a little bit better here. I, I don't know, it's just, it's like has all the same elements as the first one did for the most part, but it's just not as good. It's as simple as that. It's it's okay though, it's not bad. John Wick Chapter 4. It's been four years since the last one, the longest gap between films in this franchise, which, you know, could make sense with COVID pandemic, stuff like that. I don't know if that's why, but that's just a theory, you know. Yeah, this is great. I, I think this is awesome. This is I don't know if this quite eclipses the quality of the first one for me. It is close though. I do definitely like it more than the previous two. Those were good though, I didn't mind those, but this for me is definitely an improvement. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's just, it's great. I'm loving the action. <laughs> I'm loving some of the action scenes on here, especially towards the end. I think they get really good. The camera work, the just the choreography, it's, it's all so good. Great villain too, awesome. Awesome movie. Murder Mystery 2. I didn't love the first Murder Mystery, but I liked some aspects of it. I thought some of the comedy was okay. And I think Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston work great together. And here I would say that's even more the case. I think they're just, they have great chemistry. I mean, really great. Even in like, just go with it. I don't like that movie, but I think they're probably the best part of it. They're just really, really good together. And I think the, the action in this movie and also the silliness with regards to some of the plot and characters do work a little bit better for me. Obviously not all of it works, not all of the comedy, not even all of the action is that great, but I don't know, there was something about this that just kind of worked for me. I thought it was actually okay and one of the better sequels for these kinds of movies and definitely these movies that go to streaming, I think one of the better ones. Hope you guys liked that. Hopefully you got some enjoyment or entertainment out of that. Uh, Please comment below. I'd like to know if you guys have any thoughts on any of the stuff that I talk about in this video or any other things that I didn't do a reaction to that maybe you just want to, you know, write about, share your feelings on that came out earlier this year. I hope that this isn't the case with the next things I didn't review video. Hopefully I can stay more up to date with it and have it come out uh, at an earlier time. I do these every three months for those of you who don't know. And uh, normally I would have had this come out maybe the first day of April, maybe the second day, maybe the last day of March, you know, something like that, like kind of right around that cutoff. But uh, just a little bit late here, so again, I am sorry for that. I can't guarantee that this will be different next time, that I won't be late again, but I'll just say I hope I'm not. You know, let's just hope that I get it out in time. But until next time, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I don't know what video I'm going to be coming out with next, but uh, just be on the lookout for that. And take care. Peace out.